Thank you for your interest in Burndy products and our series of instructional videos on proper installation techniques. Burndy connectors are designed to exceed industry standards and provide trouble-free service for the intended life of the application. Long-term performance of any electrical connector begins with selecting the right connector for the application and installing it using proper techniques. In this video, we will show you how to install utility line splices. Whether the application is for copper, aluminum, ACSR, or triple AC, used in non-tension, partial tension, normal tension, or even full tension applications, the following video will show you how to get the most from your Burndy splices. In this video, we will be installing a full tension Burndy aluminum splice on one aught ACSR conductor with a 6-ton battery tool and a W die. Prior to installing any connector, a few steps must be taken. First, verify the line is safely rigged according to your utility's proper methods and safety procedures. Confirm you have all the necessary connector, tool, and dies. A Burndy connector will display the Burndy name or logo, the connector catalog number, the conductors it accommodates, and the die index. The die index represents a unique identifier for the type of die that can be used for installation. Many dies can be used on both 6-ton tools, like a Burndy MD6 or PAT MD6, and 12-ton tools, like a Burndy Y750 or PAT750. For 6-ton tools, the die index will start with a W, or W702. For 12-ton tools, the die begins with the letter U, or U702. For this installation, we chose the Burndy PAT MD6 LI tool, W702, and YDS25RL splice, and a one aught ACSR conductor. The W702 contains a novel feature that reduces an installation phenomena called bananaing, or bowing. The cable groove is offset from the center. When installing the die onto the tool, face the arrows towards the end of the tool. This die will reduce bananaing during installation. We call this type of die a non bowing die. To place the die into the tool, depress the die pin and slide the die in. Release the die pin and verify the die is locked in place. Repeat for the other die. Most aluminum connectors come from the factory with cap plugs on both ends of the connector and are pre-filled with an oxide inhibitor. The purpose of the plugs is not to keep the oxide inhibitor or penetrox from falling out, but to keep debris from entering the connector. Make sure you remove the cap plugs prior to installation and do not remove any penetrox from the connector. To begin the splice installation, verify that the end of the conductors are round. If they are not, it will be difficult to insert it into the splice. Next, straighten the conductor that will be inserted into the connector. Doing this will accomplish two things. One, it will make inserting the conductor easier. And two, it will reduce the connector from bowing as you crimp. The connector will take the shape of the conductor during installation. Next, remove the aluminum oxide from the conductor using a wire brush or other method approved by your utility. It is critical the aluminum oxide is removed. The connector cannot conduct the current through an insulating layer of aluminum oxide and may fail prematurely. A failing splice will run hotter than the conductor. When this happens, energy is lost to the atmosphere and efficiency is reduced. It can also lead to catastrophic mechanical failure when the conductor pulls out of the splice. Always wire brush the conductor. The splice, however, does not require wire brushing. Next, line up the conductor along the splice to the center point and mark the conductor. This step ensures the conductor is inserted completely during installation. Now repeat the step on the other conductor. With the conductor marked and wire brushed, it now is time to insert the conductor. All Burndy splices have a lead-in chamfer to facilitate conductor insertion. Insert the conductor until the conductor hits the center stop. It is possible penetrox may escape during this process. Verify the correct insertion depth by checking the mark you made earlier. If the conductor is not inserted to the full depth, the connector may lose holding strength and become less conductive. Once both conductors have been inserted and verified, it's time to begin crimping. All burn displaces, except for one family, are crimped from the center outward. Never start crimping at the outside and work in. This could cause the connector to rupture. To make the crimp, line up the tool and die next to the first knurled near the center of the splice. Try to keep the tool perpendicular to the splice. Next, make the crimp. If using a Burndy hydraulic tool, you will hear an audible pop to signal when the crimp is made. 
Continue crimping outward between knurls until the end of the connector. Make sure to crimp on the taper. During installation, penetrox may ooze out and that is normal. Repeat for the other conductor. One note, a time-saving trick when using hydraulic tools is to not retract the ram fully between crimps. When using scissor action crimp tools without burning numb bowing dies, it may be necessary to rotate your crimps 180 degrees to reduce bowing of the splice. Another option is to let the conductor help straighten the connector during installation. To do this, make four to five crimps on one side of the connector. Next, make four to five crimps on the other side of the connector. Now loosen the hoist to put partial tension on the splice. Verify that the conductor has not pulled out. Next, finish crimping on both connector barrels. This method reduces bowing in the connector as well as bird caging in the conductor. But check your work practices to make sure this installation method is approved. If no crimp knurls are present, then the connector will stay overlap crimps. If it does, make your first crimps near the center of the splice where it states start here. Next, make your next crimp working outward but overlap your first crimp by a quarter crimp. Overlapping crimps helps reduce corona. If, however, corona is not an issue, then overlapping is not required. Instead, maintain crimp spacing of 1 16th of an inch working outward. This will reduce the number of crimps and installation time, but still provide an ANSI rated connection. If bird caging of the conductor is present, it may go away after releasing the wire grips. Bird caging may be present with installing a splice near a dead end, a tap connector, or another splice. Try to maximize the distance from other connectors when possible. Your burn splice is now installed. For written installation instructions or more information about your splice, please visit burndy.com. And thank you for watching.